Good day, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this 18th day of November. It is Friday, and we are flying through this month. Can't believe the next week is going to be Thanksgiving on Thursday. Whew, man, we're really getting through the rest of this uh, year, and soon we'll be in 2023. Before you know it, life is a vapor, and as the Bible says, boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth, and that is sure, sure true, so... Make sure you get right with Jesus today. Make sure you trust him as your Lord and Savior, and he will wash away all your sin and give you eternal life. Amen. So um, today's topic for the Baptist bread will be titled Rebellion, and we'll be getting into that here in a few minutes. But first, as always, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Amen. <clears throat> so we're going to start with today's scripture song which is from John 8, 12. So press play here and sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. All right, whoops. Go on. <clears throat> John 8, 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Amen. <clears throat> then spake Jesus again. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am, I am, I am the light of the world. He followeth me. Shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I am the light of the world. Then spake Jesus again. Then spake Jesus again unto them. Saying, I am, I am, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I am. The light of the world, I am. The light of the world, I am. The light of the world. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. <clears throat> so if we walk with Jesus, we won't walk in darkness. We'll be in the light. Amen. Praise the Lord, the light of life. Amen. So... Back to yesterday's, and we'll sing those again towards the end of the broadcast, yesterday's and today's. Now it's time to get into today's topic, titled Rebellion, and this is for Friday, November 18th, and the passage is Proverbs 17.11, says, An evil man seeketh only rebellion, therefore a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. Oh boy, that doesn't sound very good. So don't be an evil man and rebel against the Lord. So, <clears throat> so you don't have to have that cruel messenger um, that shall be sent unto you. So don't um, let that happen. So Proverbs 17.11 is the passage. And today's author is P.H. That would be the initials for, I believe that's Brother Paul Heaton. <clears throat> so let me see here. P.H. Yep, Brother Paul Heaton. And he's the pastor of Bible Baptist Church in Lupton, Michigan. Amen. So let me write, read you what he wrote here on this topic of rebellion. He writes, Have you ever thought of yourself as a rebel? Hmm. Well, have you? And there have been times when each of us rebel against the Lord and be rebellious, and we shouldn't do that. And uh, so if you say, well, I've never rebelled or done anything rebellious, well, <laughs> you better check yourself because you might be rebelling right now, being a rebel right now as you speak. <clears throat> So, never know. So, have you ever thought of yourself as a rebel? Hmm. Uh, probably not. Uh, but then, maybe, you figured that since you behaved yourself, you were 
uh, not a rebel, right? So we tend to think if we behave ourselves, we're not a rebel. A rebel is one who willfully violates a law. Amen. So any law you violate, you're a rebel. Uh, Mr. Weber, Webster, uh, Noah Webster, uh, says that a, such a person is a villain who disobeys his lord. A villain, that is, um, that is a strong word, uh, don't you think? <clears throat> so villain, that's a strong word, don't you think? A villain is defined as a vile, wicked person, a man extremely depri depraved and capable or guilty of great crimes. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. Yikes. So be careful not to be a villain or a re rebel. Uh, so you continues on. I never thought of myself in such a light, but if I disobey the king's law, if I willfully ignore his word and do it my way, I am rebellious, and this makes one a villain. So even disobeying the Lord and uh, his uh, way and his laws and his commandments, we are rebellious and a rebel and a villain. Hmm. Ouch. Yikes. As he said above. However, let's not forget our verse. An evil man seeketh only rebellion. Not only am I a wicked and vile person, a villain, but I am also an evil person, one with bad qualities of a moral kind. Sometime, somehow, he says, and we should all uh, take heed of this, I've never seen myself in that light, but it is how God sees us, right? So, not how we see ourselves, but how God sees us. <clears throat> Paul, in Romans 7.24, sees himself as a wretched man doing what he hates and not doing what is right. And he knows that it is not him, but sin that dwelleth within. So, just because you're saved doesn't mean the flesh is saved yet. The flesh won't be saved and we won't get our new glorified body until we go be with Jesus. So, we still have to deal with this... Uh, vile evil flesh and this wicked flesh that wants to continue in sin and wants to get you in trouble and amen so make sure we uh crucify the old man and let the new man rule and reign inside of us amen so and not be rebellious again <clears throat> just obey the lord and examine ourselves that we're in the faith all right continuing on he says the reason we are rebellious is because there is a nature of rebellion within us and we will have to battle it every day, right? Every moment of every day as we go through our day, <clears throat> asking God to help us not to be, re be rebellious. So not doing it in your own power, but doing it in the Lord's power and asking the Lord to help you if you really desire that help. And the Lord will see if you're really serious or not. <laughs> so uh, be assured if you continue to be re rebellious, something is coming your way that you don't want to meet, right? So make sure you're not being rebellious because uh, um, whatever is done for the Lord will last. Whatever is done for Christ will last. Everything else will uh, burn up in smoke. So make sure we're doing more for the Lord each and every day and obeying Him more and more every day and getting our Bible and reading it and studying it and let it sink into our hearts and be obedient and get the fruits of the Spirit. Amen. And as Brother James has been going over in the Galatians series about the fruits of the Spirit. And uh, he did, uh, um, so far he's done love <clears throat> and um, peace, joy, long-suffering, and gentleness, and goodness. So, uh, so far, all those. So check those out at www.jameswnox.org or the YouTube channel at James Knox Sermons on the YouTube channel. Amen. And let's not be rebellious, even to the Lord. All right, so that's a lesson to be learned. <clears throat> be obedient. Amen. All right, so we're all guilty. And so that's that. And now it's time to get into the Boots on the Ground topic for today, November 18th. And this is from the book Boots on the Ground, Daily Devotions for the Christian Soldier by Randy Wells. And today's topic for the 18th is titled Steadfast Samson. And this takes place on November 18th, 1916. And the passage is John 15, 13. It says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. 
Amen, John 15, 13. <clears throat> All right, so Brother Wells writes here, The Great War, or World War I, ushered in the age of industrialized killing on a scale never before seen. Veterans of that conflict, when asked of their worst experience, invariably spoke of the horrors of trench warfare along the Western Front. Many soldiers have relayed uh, how the trenches came alive after sunset. This was the time when wire repair parties were sent out to fix the barbed wire. It was also the time when a wounded man's comrades would try to reach him to either drag him back to his own trench or administer first aid. This proved particularly deadly as enemy snipers would target soldiers trying to reach their wounded buddies. Mm. Instead of killing one man, the enemy might be able to kill three or four who attempted to help a fallen friend. Uh, one of the deadliest battles on the Western Front was the Battle of the Somme, S-O-M-M-E, not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, Somme, which began on 1 July 1916 and officially ended on 18 November 1916. In four and a half months, it claimed the lives of over a million men. In his autobiography, Goodbye to All That, veteran of the Somi, Robert Graves, tells of a soldier named Samson uh, had been shot 17 times. Wow, 17 times. And Samson knew that if he cried out in pain, his fellow soldiers would risk their own lives to attempt a rescue. Selflessly, desiring to spare the lives of his friends, Samson jammed his fist into his mouth to keep from crying out in agony. After the battle, Samson's body was discovered with his fist still stuck in his mouth. He had died at some time during the night, alone, but thinking of his friends. Oh, man. <laughs> That'll be a lesson for all of us. <clears throat> Dying alone, thinking of his friends. Not crying out in agony so his friends would be spared. Mm. And, uh, yikes. Um, that is, that's a good lesson there. Uh, Samson's selflessness, uh, his choice to die alone in no man's land, reminds us of Jesus' statement that there is no greater love than a willing death for one's friends. But Jesus died alone on a cross for all, even those who would reject him. But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. Tell someone today of Christ's love and sacrifice for them. Amen. Whew, that's a rough one there to, to think about Jesus dying alone on that cross for us. And we tend to be selfish and not want to uh, think of others first and <laughs> all that. So that will be another lesson for us. Mm. So, good topics today. Rough ones to uh, take heed to. Amen. Okay, so we'll uh, put that aside now and get into the hymn. And uh, so let's not be selfish and let's be uh, have that selflessness. Amen. And think of others and put abo uh, others above ourselves. And uh, again, last night, uh, Brother James had a good message on goodness. So... <laughs> Amen. So go check that out. Listen to that. And let's take heed to all that stuff. And uh, get the fruits of the Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Alright, now it's time to get into today's uh, hymn titled, Book of Books of All the Best. Amen. That's the Holy Word of God, the Bible right here. The Word of God, the Bible, the King James Bible, the Word of God. So let's get in the book and read it and study it and let it uh, take root in our hearts. Amen. And this is... Hymn 196 in the Psalms and Hymns in Spiritual Songs book. And this is by William Dosey, who lived from 1780 to 1853, and arranged by William H. Monk. Um, it says above anonymous. I'm not sure what, if there's somebody named um, that was anonymous above, and then arranged by William H. Monk, 1823 to 1889. So I'll play the instrumental. Um, sampling here and see if it's easy to sing along with if not i'll just read you the stanzas here so here we go <laughs> Oh, 
Alright, we'll try it. Give it a try. It doesn't sound too too difficult to sing along with. <clears throat> Search the scriptures, saith the Lord. They contain my holy word. Search them, blinded Pharisee. They do testify of me. Amen. <clears throat> they alone can wound and heal, make the hardest heart to feel. Speak at once our sins forgiven, guide us all the way to heaven. Amen. Sure will. <clears throat> All right, stand to three. They disclose the Savior's name, and our frozen hearts in flame. Cheer our souls along the road. Show us if we're born of God. <clears throat> they can arm us for the fight, gird us with immortal might, cause our foes to quit the field. While the Spirit's sword we wield. <clears throat> book of books of all the best. Give me this to, to take all the rest. Other books my soul may souls be tried, this can never lead astray. That was betray, sorry. <clears throat> Here I build my lasting hope. Here my weakness finds a prop. Jesus, to thy arms I fly, on thy word would live and die. Amen. Good hymn there. So again, sorry about that. Uh, this stanza um, says again, book of books, all the best, give me this, take all the rest. Other books may souls betray, this can never lead astray. Amen. So that is the hymn. And I'll give you the story down here at the bottom. Read you the story here. All right. It says, uh, Little is known of Pastor Dosey, author of Dosey's Choice, uh, an 1820 hymn book widely circulated in southern states, aside from the records of the Welsh Neck Baptist uh, Church, where he ministered for almost two decades. He accepted a call to the pastorate in February of 1814 and served until January of 1814, removing uh, to Alabama until his death at age 73. Mr. John Stout, a uh, subsequent pastor at Welsh Neck, records this of Dosey's legacy. So this way he records. Uh, he was then an elderly man of fine address, very dignified carriage, uh, fluent in speech, very earnest and strong in preaching, full of zeal in evangelistic work, in which he had marked success. Educated uh, preachers did not abound in this region in his day, and his sermons commanded attention. He was unquestionably the strongest and most efficient, or effective, most effective preacher of his time in eastern uh, South Carolina. He was a man of st sterling character and exercised a superior influence uh, socially 
I am told that he had a remarkably powerful and melodious voice and that he was very fond of singing. Hmm. Interesting. So that was uh, uh, William Dosey. I'll have to look him up and find out more about this, uh, this uh, man here. All right, and I'll give you the references. So stanza one, we have John 5.39. And then stanza two, we have Hebrews 4.12 and 1 Peter 1.23. Stanza three, we have Luke 24.32 and 1 John uh, 5.13. And then stanza four is Ephesians 6, 10 through 7. Okay, that's, I think it was supposed to be 7 through 10. I had it backwards, so Ephesians 6, 7 through 10. <clears throat> and then uh, stanza 5, we have Psalm uh, 119, the whole entire um, uh, psalm there. And then uh, stanza 6, we have Romans 15, 4, and Deuteronomy 8, 3. Amen. So that is the end of the hymn for today. And put that aside. And now I'll go ahead and sing some scripture songs. And then we'll conclude it for today. So we'll do yesterday's first and then today's. So if you have uh, one of these song books or your Bible handy, you can turn along and sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty and myself. So here we go. All right. <clears throat> Second Corinthians 4, 17 and 18. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not on things which are seen, but at things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen. For our light affliction, is but for a moment work it for us work it for us uh, far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory like the affliction work it for us while we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. For light affliction worketh for us. That's right. All right, now we'll conclude with uh, today's. <clears throat> John 8, 12. Then, then spake Jesus, Jesus again unto them, them saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not, me shall not walk, walk in darkness, darkness but shall have the light of life. Amen and hallelujah for that. <clears throat> then spake Jesus again. Then Spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am, I am, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I am the light of the world. Then spake Jesus again. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am, I am. I am the light of the world. Shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I am 
the light of the world I am. The light of the world I am. The light of the world. Amen. <clears throat> so that was Jesus speaking. Amen. All right, so that is the end of today's broadcast. But before I go, as always, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then the topics for the Baptist bread and boots on the ground devotionals and then the hymn for tomorrow. <clears throat> so tomorrow will be the 19th and Psalms 511 will be the um, scripture song. And it says, but let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. And this is talking about God. Amen. So praise the Lord. Psalm 511 will be tomorrow's scripture song. And then tomorrow's topic for the Baptist bread will be titled Helpless and Hopeless Almost in parentheses. So helpless and hopeless. And then in parentheses he writes almost. And then the passage is Mark uh, 536b. So that will be tomorrow's topic for Saturday the 19th on the Baptist spread. And then tomorrow's Boots on the Ground devotional topic will be titled uh, Foolish Pursuits. Oh, uh, Foolish Pursuits. So what are you uh, pursuing at that's foolish? Mm. And this takes place on November 19th, 1942. And the passage is um, Titus, I think that's uh, 3.9. Yep, Titus 3.9. So that will be tomorrow's boots on the ground and then tomorrow's hymn will be titled the bible is the test of all and this is hymn 197 in the psalms and hymns and spiritual songs book amen so that would be tomorrow's hymn there is no story for this one so I'll sing that tomorrow amen and if you want to get a copy of that book it's available on melodypublications.com it's where you can get a copy of that and then for the scripture songs book and CDs. This is the cover. I know it's backwards on the screen, but that's the cover of the song book. And then the um, scripture song CDs, the covers are on the back of the book. So you can check that out. Uh, different covers there. And those are available on www.dailyscripturesongs.com. That's Brother Dean and Sister Patty's website, Missionaries to Port Kaituma, Guyana. So pray for them. And Sister Patty is... Uh, she might be back already, but uh, I know I read the other day that Brother Dean was saying that she was on her way back. So, um, back to Guyana. So, amen. And keep them in your prayers and all those that are um, helping them out over there. And pray for all missionaries around the world. And you can too, can be a bold witness in your own backyard by going out and telling somebody about Jesus today. Amen. Alright, so that's the information for the Scripture Songs book and CDs. And then we got the Baptist Bread devotional book for November and December. If you order now, you'll probably get the ones for January and February of 2023. And that information is www.baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org. And the second website has other material on it, um, other books and stuff, I believe. I uh, haven't been on there in a while, so check that out if you're interested. And uh, then the Boots on the Ground book, you can find that on the Internet. That's where I got my copy, so amen and praise the Lord. All right, well, that'll be it for today, so thanks for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you until next time. And remember, make sure you get right with Jesus today, and trust Him as your Lord and Savior if you have not done so already. And I uh, hope and pray that this is a help and a blessing to you if you're a fellow believer in Christ, and it'll help you to be a better Christian, and uh, pretty rough uh, devotionals today to take heed of, so amen. Let's... Uh, uh, let it uh, sink in our hearts what we listen to and learn today. Amen. All right. Well, thanks again for watching. Bye for now.